Hello, and um, welcome back to TWS TV. My name is Alfie, and um, today we're going to be delving into a deeply controversial and sensitive story that's been making the headlines recently. T.B. Joshua. He's the late founder of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And today, we're going to be diving deep into the BBC documentary and see if we can uncover some facts. Stay tuned. Like, subscribe, and remember to hit that bell icon. Stay in touch, stay updated. Let's get going. In order to understand the gravity of this story, it's important to know who T.B. Joshua was. Temi Tope, Balogun Joshua, more commonly known as T.B. Joshua, was a Nigerian charismatic pastor, televangelist and philanthropist. He was the leader and the founder of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, a Christian megachurch that runs the Emmanuel TV television station from Lagos in Nigeria. Joshua was known for his popularity across Africa and Latin America and had a large social media presence. His ministry attracted millions from all over the world, with his church being a prominent destination for religious tourism in Nigeria. T.B. Joshua was often in the spotlight for his so-called miracles, prophecies, and claims of faith healing, which brought him from both reverence and skepticism. Despite his massive following, his ministry was shrouded in controversy, ranging from queries about the authenticity of his miracles. Nobody would knowingly join a cult. It will just take you. And when it's grabbed a hold of you, it infiltrates your mind. My name is Rachel and I'm from the UK. And we are Let's delve deeper into the BBC Africa documentary that has sparked significant conversations globally. You see, this isn't just any documentary, though. It's a meticulously crafted three-part series by BBC's Africa Eye, renowned for its in-depth investigation and, and, and journalism. They are focused this time the life, the ministry, and the hidden stories surrounding T.B. Joshua and his Church of All Nations. What sets this documentary apart is its approach. The BBC team didn't just rely on hearsay or unverified claims. They conducted intensive interviews with former members and employees of the church, gathering first-hand accounts and evidence. These testimonies paint a complex and very disturbing picture of what life was like within the walls of Joshua's church. The series delves into the personal experiences of those who were once part of the church's inner circle. It uncovers the stories of manipulation, fear, and control, and rape, and from the claims of staged miracles to emotional and psychological impact that this had on his followers. The documentary offers a rare glimpse into the inner workings of a globally influential religious organization. But it's not just about the man himself. This investigation also highlights the broader implications of such unregulated spiritual authority. It raises critical questions about the intersection of faith, power, and accountability in religious institutions. Moreover, the series serves as a sobering reminder of the responsibility that comes with being a religious leader. It underscores the importance of transparency and the ethical practices in places of worship. It's igniting a much-needed dialogue about the roles and responsibilities of religious figures in modern society. Everyone here in the stadium, everywhere here, say Jesus! Son of the Jesus! He wanted to be the biggest, best, the most important pastor in the world. This is the moment we have been waiting for. Prophet TV Joshua has arrived here. One of the most startling aspects of the BBC Africa documentary are the allegations of abuse within the church. These claims have cast a shadow over the legacy of T.B. Joshua. Several individuals, 
once part of his organization, have come forward with harrowing accounts of their experiences. The allegations are grave and multifaceted, involving accusations of sexual abuse, rape, forced abortions on women, some of whom were teenagers at the time. Some women have shared their painful stories of how they were manipulated and sexually exploited by the prophet, so-called prophet. These testimonies are not just about individual aspects or individual acts of abuse. They depict a systematic pattern of behavior that lasted for years. The documentary also sheds light on the culture of silence and fear that purportedly thrived in the church. Victims speak of being silenced or threatened, painting a picture of an environment where dissent or exposure was met with very harsh consequences. It's important to note that the gravity of these allegations, they're not just about immoral acts. They speak to a broader issue of power, dynamics, and abuse within religious settings. This is a stark reminder of the importance of safeguarding and accountability in such institutions. As we discuss these allegations, it's crucial to approach the topic with sensitivity and a focus on the impact these experiences have had on the victims. This part of the documentary challenges us to reflect on the responsibility of religious leaders to their congregations and the need for transparency and ethical conduct in all aspects of religious life. The man of God told us that Satan is the author of killing, of stealing, and of destruction. As we reach the end of this discussion, it's important to consider the broader context in which these revelations sit. The story of T.B. Joshua and the allegations against him are more than just a narrative about a single religious leader or church. It's a mirror reflecting a larger issue that resonates across Africa. Religion, with its deep roots in African culture, has often been a source of hope and community. However, this same reverence can sometimes lead to a form of cognitive dissonance, intoxication, where critical thinking and accountability are overshadowed by blind faith. The allegations against T.B. Joshua highlight a concerning pattern where charisma and spiritual authority, well, so-called spiritual authority, can blur the lines of morality and ethics. Now, this isn't to say that religion itself is to blame, but rather the way it's sometimes used by those in power. It serves as a wake-up call to us, calls for the need for, for vigilance and responsibility in both our personal faith and in those we choose to follow. Some of us must champion a culture where questioning and, and accountability are not just accepted, but encouraged. As we navigate these complex waters, let's strive for a balance, where faith enriches our lives without compromising our ability to discern and to challenge stupidity in high places. Let's use this story as a catalyst for change, not just in our religious institutions, but in how we approach faith and authority in every aspect of our lives. So thank you for joining me in this important conversation. Please let's keep this dialogue going. In the comments below, I want to hear your thoughts, I want to hear your perspectives, and as always, remember to stay curious, keep asking the questions, stay informed, and question, 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 everything, anything. Let's set the ball rolling, let's keep the conversation going. I'm Alfie. And I'm out.